don't really want to get up and get out of bed yeah I get up and get out of bed I don't really want to work out I work out I, I really don't want to hammer on a project I hammer on the project now, as an overall rule I do not like procrastination you need to get things done but if you are going to rest that is one thing that you should procrastinate on that's the one thing I want you to put off until tomorrow now these could be signals that you need some time off and those signals might be right they could be correct but don't take today off don't don't give in to the immediate gratification that is whispering in your ear shut that down do not listen to that little voice instead go through the motions lift the weights sprint the hill work on the project get out of bed if you only have 24 hours in a day your success is dependent upon how you use the 24. You got to hear me. People talk about Oprah Winfrey, you know, Ted Turner, Warren Buffett. Listen to me. I don't care how much money you make. You only get 24 hours in a day. And the difference between Oprah and the person that's broke is Oprah uses her 24 hours wisely. That's it. Listen to me. That's it. You get 24. I don't care if you broke, you grew up broke. I don't care if you grew up rich. I don't care if you're in college, you're not in college. You only get 24 hours. And I blew up literally. I went from being a high school dropout to selling 6,000 books in less than six months. What happened? My 24 hours. I was like, okay, Eric, you got to get a grip on your 24 hours because you're about to be broke for the rest of your life. And this is all I need you to do for me. I can tell you all about your life if you just write down your 24-hour schedule for me and you let me look at it. I can tell you where you're going to be in five years. I can tell you where you're going to be in 10 years. I can tell you where you're going to be in 20 years if you keep that schedule. I had a teacher in eighth grade. Eighth grade tell me I wasn't going to make it in high school. Eighth grade, I had a teacher telling me that foolishness. And what did I do? I proved them right. I went to high school wilding out. Ninth grade year, wild out so bad, that school kicked me out. They was like, you know, we can't even take this no more. Kick you out. Go to another school. I completely flunked that. Go to a third school and finally begin to get my act together. I'm proving everybody who did not believe in me right. And the few people who did believe in me, I'm proving them wrong. Again, we're dealing with it matters of the heart now. A lot of times we behave in the way we behave because we don't feel like we got worth or value. We don't really recognize the heritage of who we are and what we can do. So we just on that, I'm just going to do whatever and get a couple laughs. But when you recognize how great you are, when you recognize that champion that's inside you, you'll say, you know what, I got more to give. There's more to life than this right here. I deserve better. You deserve better. And then you'll say, you know what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to prove everybody who didn't believe in me wrong. And the few people who do believe in me, I'm going to prove them right. And when you do that, everything inside your life changes. I just start saying, before I make decisions, I just start saying, okay, is this going to make my mama proud or all the people that's hating on me? Is this going to make them say, see, I told you. I'm in India speaking. I found out the culture in India, there in Bangalore where I was, has the highest suicide rate because if these kids do not do well in high school, they know they won't go to college and they know for the rest of their lives they'll end up in poverty and they said, I'd rather die than be in poverty. That's what you call desperation. But you gonna settle for whatever the world gives you? You gonna settle for living how your mom and dad live now? I'm telling y'all, my young friends, you ain't gotta settle for that.